then asks us, it's given us all, it's given us the probability that we worked out in part A, but it's also given us two other probabilities as well. It's missed off this third one. But because that's the only other thing that could happen if these three things don't happen, we know that this is going to be the difference between one and what these numbers add up to. So straight away, we can fill this missing value in. So if I do one minus the one over 30, the three over 10, and the half, that will tell us this probability that x is equal to 3. So that's a sixth. So we can put a sixth into here. And then, now that we've got the full probability distribution, we can go ahead and work out e of x and the variance of x. e of x, you should remember how to work that out. That is um, the sum of the xp's. So adding, timesing these together and adding the results. So e of x is going to be 0 times 1 over 30, which is just 0. 1 times 3 over 10, which is 3 over 10. 2 times a half and three times a sixth. So it's going to be three tenths plus one plus a half. Three over 10 plus one plus a half. So that's nine over five. If you want that as a decimal, you could write 1.8. The variance of x is similar to start with, we square this number before we times it by the second one and add the columns, add the results, and we also subtract the square of the expectation. So the variance of x is going to be 0 squared times 1 over 30, so that's still 0. 1 squared times 3 over 10, so that's still just 3 over 10. But then it's going to be 2 squared times a half, so 4 times a half, and it's going to be 3 squared, so 9 times a 6. And we're going to subtract 1.8 squared. So 3 over 10 plus, that's going to be 2, plus 9 over 6 minus 1.8 squared is 14 over 25. Or again, as a decimal, that's 0 0.56.